How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. Another awesome week in professional wrestling. It's a lot of fun. I got to tell you, covering this, talking about this, I have a blast. I have a blast with you guys. I get this great opportunity to go on Sports Byline each and every Sunday. Talk to the masses about professional wrestling. You would imagine, after doing it for so long, how do you have so much to talk about? Well, a lot is happening every single week. CM Punk debut return on Monday Night Raw. Obviously, last week we spoke about his return at Survivor Series. At the end of War Games. Setting up a lot of things. We're going to talk about potential matches. And where we see him headed. Also today on the show, Monday Night Raw TV deal is close to happening. A lot of speculation on the internet. Nice write-up about it in this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter. We're going to touch on that. I have some insight on this. I have a little bit of insight on this. People were losing their minds all week. Also, AWWBD, Warner Media. Uh, Max, we're going to touch on that a little bit. SmackDown, Randy Orton setting up his feud with the Bloodline and with Roman. Collision recap. They made, they made some cool things happen on Collision. They're kind of setting up the next pay-per-view and future matches to happen, so which I like. Also, Continental Classic standings we're going to break down. And a whole bunch of other stuff here on the show. Listen, go into a quick break. Don't leave. Stay. Listen to the commercials. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here with me, Andrew Zarian on Sports Byline. Let's talk about this. Let's go right into it. CM Punk, Monday Night Raw. You know, this, the, this show ends up becoming like a weekly recap, right? Of the, the major stories of the week. Brian covers it daily. I do, I do a little recap. But, you know, I watched all of that show. For the first time in a very long time, I sat there and I watched three hours of Monday Night Raw. And, you know, I got to be honest, it felt like I was watching three hours of Monday Night Raw. For all the accusations I get for being a WWE apologist, actually, I get whatever. Whatever, whoever is the contrarian to the discussion, I get the opposite, right? If I'm talking positively about AEW, all of a sudden, oh, look at you, loving AEW. I like good wrestling. Monday Night Raw was Monday Night Raw. Apparently, Triple H was not there. This was a Bruce Pritchard production. I don't know if you could say it felt that way or not. It just felt like a Monday Night Raw. Did great numbers, 1.8 million viewers. They were up about 400,000 viewers, which is pretty much the needle of what he's able to do. You know, CM Punk, John Cena, they return back. You see, it pops, you know, about 300,000, 400,000 viewers. Somebody once told me that that's like the gauge for like a top guy. Like that's what they could do is move the needle that way. I don't know how true it is today, but we saw it. There was obviously a needle mover here with CM Punk. So at the end of the show, he comes out and delivers a very positive, I'm a new and improved CM Punk. I've learned my lesson. Uh, I'm a different man now. And then, of course, he says the I'm finally home. Obviously, this is going to lead to something. Now, if this is him just warming up a little bit and then things heat up, great. If this is the promo that he's going to give, I thought this was soulless. Until the very end. The most honest thing he said at the end was, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make money. And I'm like, you know what? He, he definitely is. <laughs> He's definitely there to make some money. Uh, it was not a great promo. It wasn't a bad promo, but it wasn't anything that we got from him in AEW. I didn't. And again, I'm saying that I wasn't expecting to go in there and attack Tony Khan and AEW and the Bucks and Kenny. Like, I, I didn't expect any of that. I thought they would have been a little bit more passion. Uh, he could have been fired up a little bit more. But listen, what does he have to be fired up about, right? He's not feuding with anybody right now. He got a great job offer. 
So I guess it's justified for him to be happy. I don't know. I just felt that it, it wasn't, we didn't get the CM Punk promo that the people wanted. What'd you think of it, MG? Oh, I, I, I agree with you 100%. I thought that, I thought it was safe, I guess is the word I used. Very safe promo, yeah. He wasn't there, he wasn't there to um, rattle cages, he, which is what people want out of Punk. That's yeah. that's the appeal of him, right? He's the uh, he's our generation's Stone Cold, or this is that? generation's Stone Cold, like, whatever his generation's, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, so, I, you I, know, I get it. I get, I get it. Mm-hmm. I, I would I have wanted a little bit more. Sure. Am I gonna be patient and watch this and wait? Yeah, of course. But this kind of set up something interesting here because he's obviously on the raw brand for now. He did bring up yeah. the wise man, which I thought was very interesting in the promo, and it wasn't done for no reason. I think it was done for a reason, absolutely. So this now leads into a very interesting discussion. What programs will he be in? What matches can we see? What matches can we uh, expect? Obviously, Seth Rollins is a big topic here. Seth, Seth's reaction at the end of, of uh, War Games, the War Survivor. Games match, yep. Survivor Series. Mm-hmm. Kind of set the tone, but okay, well, Seth is enraged by this man. And he was giving him the double bird. He's furious. You know, Drew actually is another guy that could be a potential feud. He brought up the wise man. So obviously there's a natural story there with Roman Reigns, Cody. You know, that's another match you could set up for him. But the very interesting thing on... I believe it was, was it Monday or Tuesday? I think it was probably Tuesday. Tuesday when the, the Stone Cold stuff come out? Yeah, yeah. I, I made okay. a post and I on Twitter and I posted, um, I said something along the lines of, you know, it, it would be very interesting if this could possibly happen. And I, and I made that post because I was talking to somebody over at WWE and they, they brought that topic up. It wasn't brought up in the sense of like, this is happening or there's an active discussion happening, but... It was more along the lines of, and again, this was a very casual conversation. It wasn't any confirmation or anything, right? But it was more along the lines of like, hey, listen, if we can make this happen, we want this to happen. If this, if Steve is ready to do this and, and, and Punk is good to do this, we would love for this to happen. So I made that post. Sean Ross Sapp over at Fightful made a very interesting Fightful Select story where he reported that there has been some conversation surrounding this. And I'm like, aha, interesting that that person brought this up to me. Man, if you're talking about a WrestleMania, right? It's an attraction at this point. Remember, WWE is not in that same mind frame that we kind of expect from them over the last, you know, what they've done in 10 years. Now it's, what can we do to become even bigger of an attraction if we can make something happen listen wrestlemania unfortunately for a lot of people it's not about deserved spots anymore it's about the biggest thing that we could possibly do and is there a bigger match than a cm punk steve austin for night one and a bro and a you know rock versus roman reigns on night two i don't think so and that's unfortunate for Cody, obviously. That's unfortunate for Seth. That's unfortunate for Drew or whoever else would be in a main event position. But listen, man, at the end of the day, everybody, they're, they're all millionaires on, on this tremendous show that could potentially be one of the greatest of all time if they put it together right. I want to see that match. We saw what he could do with Kevin Owens. I enjoyed it. Again, once again, it's an attraction. Am I watching it for it to be a five-star clinic? No. One of my favorite matches of all time is The Rock and and Hogan at WrestleMania 18. That, you know, that's one of, and and I, I talk about this regularly. That is one of the entry matches I show somebody that's not like a big wrestling fan. If I'm like, you're gonna watch something like, I'm not telling them to watch Okada Omega. That's for me. I'll sit there and I'll watch that 60-minute match over and over and over again. I absolutely love it. But I want to introduce you to something. Man, is there anything more pro wrestling than that match at WrestleMania 18? No. 
And I'm willing to bet we'll get something really cool out of this too. Maybe that's when we get the Hogan leg drop on on uh, on Austin. Maybe maybe uh, maybe Punk will do this again. You know, the Hogan year. Don't for forget on the radio. Don't forget how uh, how over that uh, Kevin Owens Austin match was. Dude, I loved it. Like, I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. It was it was exactly what it was supposed to be. And then he came out the next day and he stunned, you know, McMahon. And, and it was the worst stunner of all time, but nobody cared because he stunned McMahon one last time, you know? It was fun. Steve Austin has transcended into a, a – he could do bare minimum and, and I, will, I will be happy. Uh, I don't care. I want to see that match. But this kind of lays the groundwork as far as, okay, what do you do with him? Do you have him and Seth Rollins in a feud immediately? Do you – uh, you know what? I'm going to do this. So we got about a minute and some change before going on break. MJ, give me your three matches you want to see CM Punk in. Um, Seth Rollins, of course. I okay. think that one would be yeah. great. Natural story. Roman, Roman, right. Yeah. Um, so those two for sure, because there's a, the whole shield interaction. Um, and then I, I'm intrigued by Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. Drew and reason. CM Punk. Uh, mm hmm yeah. You know, there, there's. I want to see him with some of the younger guys too. Oh, I think we'll get all of that. I think you know, I think and I think that's going to be very know. important too to see him with some of those young guys uh, in the mix and see how he does. You know, will he stay healthy? I hope so. Will he not fight in the back? I hope so, because you could use him to elevate some great talent on that card. Him and LA Knight. I want to see that weird. I mean, he's not a young talent; he's older. But I want to see that weird match. That promo battle would be great. That promo battle would be great. Absolutely. There's a lot here to unpack, and this is just the beginning of this experiment. We'll see what happens. Go to a quick break. When we come back, a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We spoke about CM Punk. I mean, obviously, that was the big story here this week, but there was another big story that caused... My Twitter timeline, my X timeline. I got to get used to that, John, my other producer here. I got to get used to saying X. I get zapped every time I say Twitter. The guys at Sports Byline, my, all my producers, they got a little, little zapper. They're like, no, 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 no. It's not called that anymore. My X timeline went insane uh, because I, I sent a correction to somebody. There's been a, this bizarre rumor, okay, that... WBD is the front runner to get Monday Night Raw. I, and listen, I, is anything possible? Sure. Is it possible they are interested in Monday Night Raw? Sure. I don't believe that's the case today, but were they maybe? Maybe. I, I never heard it. I can't confirm it. I can't report it. I can't say anything. I've asked. I've spoken to Dave Meltzer about this. Spoken to Sean Ross Sapp about this. Uh, I'm very transparent when I hear something. I confirm with the guys that know. I, I regularly contact Dave. We're very formal, though, on text. It's Andrew Zarian and I, David Meltzer. You know, very formal, very professional. But, you know, we talk, and, you know, you have to. If you want to get stuff like this right, you got to talk about it with other people that kind of know things. And I never once heard WBD was a front runner to get Monday Night Raw. I mean, I have heard FX being one of those channels, which that would be a Disney property, right? FX? Yes, it's a Disney property. It's a Disney property. Uh, I've heard FX for a while. I think a lot of other people have heard it. I've heard Amazon also, right? But... I, I don't know if Amazon is a legitimate thing or it's just, okay, well, if there's a streaming provider that could facilitate, you know, this show and, and the money, who would it be? It's obviously Amazon. Um, the other one is obviously NBCU, that it maybe stays on NBCU. You know, that's another conversation. But I've never once heard that WBD is looking to get rid of AEW and would replace it with Monday Night Raw. And somehow that became the conversation. My entire timeline. I was getting asked over and over and over again. And 
you know, I made a very simple post and some people got upset at that. And I have no idea why I said, listen, I don't claim to know everything. All I do know is that I've never heard this. Do I think it's happening? No. Could it? Maybe. I don't expect it to happen. Uh, you know, I, I know that the relationship is very strong with WBD and AEW. They're, they're happy with AEW. They're looking to expand more programming with AEW. They're actively discussing the next contract and where they're going and the plans. I think uh, certain things in principle have been agreed upon. There's multiple things for the AW deal. There's the next day rights. There's the archived on Max. There's the pay-per-view. Listen, if you are going to do a process of elimination, you know that AEW is going to end up on Max because BR is a dead platform. It's no longer an active platform. Why would you sustain something just for one, one product? They just haven't implemented a pay-per-view feature in Max. And maybe that's the hang-up here. I was always told beginning of 2024, whether that's early first quarter or late first quarter, I don't know. But that was always from the beginning. From when I reported that months ago was, oh, it's going to happen. The same time I was told that they're going monthly with the pay-per-views, in which they did. From the time that I was told, they, they've they been monthly since uh, double or nothing. They've been monthly with pay-per-views. Does that mean 11 pay-per-views? Does that mean 12 pay-per-views? Does that mean nine, you know, 10 pay-per-views? I mean, that's as close to monthly as possible. They've gone monthly the last couple months. Not only that, they've doubled up twice on pay-per-views. Final battle and World's End, same month. All in, all out, a week apart. You know, space those out a little bit. Now you're at a monthly pay-per-view. However, I don't see... I, I mean, I would be shocked based on what I know and what I hear currently, actively, if WBD was dropping AEW. Financials, I have no idea. I don't know what the discussions are. I saw that there was a report. Did you see that? That, that AEW made a revenue of a hundred and something million dollars this year? Did yes, you see I did. that? What was it? 170 mm -hmm. million? Where was that reported? I didn't, I didn't. I, I, I didn't read all of the Observer this week. Across my, yeah, I come I across that. my timeline. Yeah, is it realistic? Yeah. Sure. Between merch and gates and TV. Listen, man, I mean, that's impressive. They, they, they obviously had the biggest revenue year that they've ever had. That's super impressive. Can I offer you up a uh, scenario? Can you that, offer uh, me up? To who? <laughs> Jeez, can I offer you up a a, a scenario for um yeah. for streaming for Amazon? Yeah, give, me, give me um something something that I think would be beneficial. Now I don't know. Obviously, I think viewership would be down all across the board if they did went to like a streaming service. I agree like with Amazon. you. Yeah, but there is an argument said that they will get a younger audience because there's so many people on uh, on Twitch that Amazon owns Twitch and you can do something what they call co streaming. So now you get these small niche audiences that have their own their yeah. own platforms, their own audiences that will watch it with them. So now you you create a more interactive uh, branding. That's something to be said. I don't know if that's uh, scalable to the the where they want to take Raw, but um, I think there's I think getting that would because basically if you go on Amazon you're killing the over 50 branding so you need to replace yeah, which, that which by the way audience. that's an, that's a significant audience of consistency yes right and th those are loyal the uh, we talk about 18 to 24 18 to 30 18 to 40 you know as a, as a whole as being the most valuable and they're the most valuable for not for viewership they're the most valuable for ad revenue that's why the most, actually, the most committed is your 50 because they will tune in. They've been tuning in for 40 years already. You know, I'm turning 40 years old. I'm, I'm exiting that key demo at this point, but I'll continue to watch wrestling even if I no longer engage with wrestling because it's part of my people pattern. Now, going to Amazon, I, if, if it's a money deal, I think Amazon could facilitate this, but I also think that you're going to, you're going to change a 30 year habit of tuning in and i don't know what that means or what that does it's you know there's no metrics to look at i could just tell you that historically when something goes from television to digital 
it doesn't get the same amount. You could gloat all you want about two and a half million people watching CM Punk's uh, debut on YouTube. But what does that mean? Not much. Your YouTube ad revenue is like $20,000 from that. Or whatever, you know, if we're, we're, we're putting it on the low end. That is not, that means nothing compared to two and a half million people watching Monday Night Raw. So digital is measured very differently. And I think they need to be careful. I think the smartest bet would be to stay on linear television. Don't exit. And uh, if, if it is FX, you know, a lot of people are afraid that it's going to Disneyfy WWE even more. But that's not true because UFC's on ESPN. That's a Disney property. And look at the content that FX has had. Always sunny, not very Disneyfied. Plus, by the way, you would also probably be on ESPN Plus if you could if you're on uh, a Disney property. I don't know. So I don't know if that's that true. Happens. Is that because remember, uh, in what capacity? Well, I, gets... it would have to be in the negotiations, of course. But yeah, but I think there's a possibility that you know. Now, there's your streaming aspect. If that if that goes that way. Yeah. Mm. I. I don't know. I. <sighs> I would say people are getting very worked up when they don't understand how any of this is going to be constructed. I, I think WWE's fine. I think AEW's fine. I don't think Warner's kicking AEW off the air for Monday Night Raw. This isn't TNN and Spike TV. This is a very different relationship that AEW has with WBD. I think the, the company, Warner, sees AEW as a unique asset that they, they want to be strategically partnered with. I think with WWE, it would be a very different type of relationship that they would have. There's so many hands to work go through with them. I think they enjoy the relationship they have with Tony. Well, listen, I could be wrong. People I think a lot of this happened. Be wrong. I think a lot of this happened because people want to stir this up. They want the the uh, yeah. the chaos, right? They want to know, oh, is is uh, WWE uh, killing AEW by taking over their their TV deal or something uh, I mean, like that? That's where a lot of this comes. Well, Dave in reported. Opinion. Dave reported that in October, right? Isn't this Dave's report that in October mm-hmm. Nick Khan had a meeting with with WBD and WBD passed? Yeah, and that's it. But people are a lot of this stirring it up is people wanting to believe that there's chaos. So talking about chaos, I'm I'm watching. Uh, I have Collision on from last night, and I'm watching Abaddon. What an insane look! <laughs> what a cr- crazy look on her. Um, listen, I I think this is a lot of people stirring stuff up. I think this is a lot of people being impatient because the WBD deal has not been announced yet. We don't know what's happening with Max yet. You know, I think people are anxious to get information and it's just not there. We don't have it yet because they're it's just not ready yet. You got to give these things some time. But we are going to find out the WWE situation very soon with their TV deal. And that's going to be very telling about the future of pro wrestling in 2024. I expect it within the next month or so. That's what I'm hearing. Um, I can tell you people at USA uh, on, on a, not a, not a high level, but on a mid level are, are not very, um, familiar with this either. So whatever this is, is very hush hush. We'll see what happens when we come back. We're going to talk about TV and a whole lot more happening in the world of professional wrestling. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. Let's talk about some TV. SmackDown this Friday. It was fine. Bianca started the show off thanking her War Games team before she was interrupted by damage control. Bailey wasn't there. Interesting. I'm into this story. Bobby Lashley defeated Butch. So this was interesting. Paul Heyman tried to intimidate Nick Aldis to not sign Randy to SmackDown. That was the big story here of the show. Will Randy go to SmackDown or Raw? Are they going to sign him? Paul does not want him there. We also had Santos Escobar 
uh, against uh, uh, defeated uh, Wild. Logan Paul announced the tournament to crown his next opponent for the U.S. title. I, you know, I really, I'm curious where they're going with this because what's his WrestleMania match? What do you think the big WrestleMania match for that title is for him? Is it LA Knight? I think it should be. I think that I think they they he's not in this tournament, so I think it she. I think that would be a great a great elevation, a great where where they yeah. should take it. I think I think LA Knight with that U.S. title is a great. I mean, that's going back to you know, putting and also we're seeing what they're doing with the IC title. The IC title is on a great guy, it's on Gunther. Mm-hmm. He's made it into a big time title again, and you can do the same with the U.S. title. You have it on Logan Paul, one of the most recognizable media personalities in the world. And it's likely the tournament winner is going to be Kevin Owens. That's the story they're telling here, and that's and he's yeah. awesome. So he, Kevin Owens can't do no wrong. He's like one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah, Kevin Owens versus Han- Logan Paul at, at, um, Royal Rumble. Yeah, I, I, I'm guessing that's where it would be. Logan keeps but the they title. Could also do it on TV. Yeah, right? I mean, you mm-hmm. could do so much here. And then you had Randy Orton coming out. He signs his contract. SmackDown is his home. Setting up the feud with the bloodline. This seems to be the Royal Rumble match for Randy Orton. It's going to be Randy Orton and the Tribal Chief. Roman Reigns. Now, we've seen this match before, but not at this level. Randy it was looks at great. SummerSlam. Yeah, right, it was when at, Roman yeah. Was, was really young. <laughs> but you know, it's a different time now, and I think this is very interesting. So, you know, are, is this your filler for Randy? Is this your filler for Royal Rumble to have Roman Reigns and Randy in the match? Maybe. It looks like Roman is holding that title until WrestleMania, the earliest he'll oh, drop yeah. it. Oh, yeah. That would definitely set point, him. He's passing that that, that Bruno, yeah. that that second yeah. Bruno record, right? He's passing it at right. that point. Because what was that, 1,200 oh, and something days? I believe so. Okay, and then the next one is take Hogan it off him at 1,400. other than a mania, right? You I guess that report. <laughs> I guess remember that report uh, that somebody at WWE told me that you know their their goal was to redo the record books, where you have mm-hmm. some more modern talent on the higher end of the greatest champions, the length of the championship. Remember this was like after WrestleMania we spoke about this, and somehow it got published into Andrew Zarian reported that the goal is to pass Hogan's record. Record. Do you remember that? Yes, I and do. I was flipping yes. out. I was like, was I never said thing. that. It's probably now. You know, it's probably happening now. <laughs> He's coming close. He's like 300 well, days away. Does he hold that title for another year? I don't know if they should go that far, but like, but like I said, I don't think you can take it off of him other than a mania. That's when it has to come. And off. there's only That's a couple people that can do it, right? Possible moment. Yep. There's and only like point, two or Cody's. three people at this point that could do it. Cody. Yep. Uh. Punk now Punk. is a possibility. Yeah. And who else? Mm-hmm. Dwayne? I, I don't want to see that. The Rock's an attraction match. The Rock, the Rock's I, an attraction that, match, yeah. Yeah, you can't really put it on him. So It's not going to be LA Knight, guys. I'm sorry. That's, that would be a cool upset. I'm watching Andrade right now come out. That collision's still on. So I, I thought this was interesting. Randy Orton, Roman Reigns. They also made an interesting announcement. This is CM Punk's return to SmackDown next week. A tribute, a tribute to the troops. Three matches have been set for that. We're going to have CM Punk's return. United States Championship number one contender tournament first round. Bobby Lashley versus Karrion Cross. United States number one uh, tournament first round also for Dragon Lee and Santos Escobar. And you also have Charlotte Flair and Asuka on that. Real quick, Dragon yeah. Lee is getting over just by wrestling. Yes. It's, one of the, and, it's been a long time since they've been able to do that. They've That's been great. looking to replace Rey Mysterio for a very long time. They have tried and tried and tried. And they may have found it. I think they may have found it with Dragon Lee. He, and he's getting very over. The, the, the gauge that they use. I, I, and again, I don't know the metrics that what they do, but he's very much engaging a younger audience. And it's the same Rey Mysterio effect that they have felt before. Smaller guy behind a mask. He does a lot of flips. He's a good wrestler. How do you not sell that? 
gets over. So we'll see. We'll see how far that goes. Let's talk about Collision. Started off Continental Classic Blue League match. Brody King defeated Claudio. This was a great match. Another great match. I love Brody King. Oh. I, and, you know, it's interesting because I, I want him to do so much more. Great big man. It with him. Yeah, it yeah, started. I, yeah. The highlight of this match for me was Claudio giant swinging Brody King, who's over 300 pounds. I thought that was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, this was great. Uh, so now Brody King has six points. Claudio with three. Uh, Abaddon defeated Kiara Hogan. Abaddon is spooky. She's scary. She came up. She did her spooky entrance. She had a spooky match. Then the lights go off, and Julia Hart is standing there being even more spooky. <laughs> All right. Cool. Here's what you always wanted, a spooky woman feud. <laughs> I love spooky feuds. Turn all of them into vampires. Look, it's me, Bruno San Martino. I, 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 you know, I would love Bruno to be a vampire. And MG's laughing. Our producer's dying here. Blah, but I can't. It's the 1980s. Everybody's too big. The blood is tainted. Ah, Hulk Hogan, get away. You know? No? Nobody? Nobody in this theories. audience? <laughs> the tens of thousands of people listening? Nobody wants to see or wanted to see Bruno San Martino as a very traditional vampire? A Dracul? <laughs> I guess not. Maybe, you know what? I knew I shouldn't have pitched it to WWE. Knew it. They think I'm, I'm a fool now. That's why they this. don't take your phone calls anymore. <laughs> this is why they stopped. <laughs> oh, man. That's Zarian. Too much vampire stuff. You see, but AEW, they listen to me. Ah, it's me, Hangman Page. <laughs> no? <laughs> I'm a vampire exactly now. I'm a cowboy vampire. I don't think you had anything to do with that spot. <laughs> Swerve, come here. Let me see your blood. No? I think I had everything to do with that spot. You know, I can tell you. I will tell you that somebody was in the room when I was pitching this to JJ. Wrestling, wrestling Observer's JJ. Amazing photographer. I sat there. In a room full of people, some may or may not be in AEW, and I pitched all these vampire gimmicks. I just spoke about vampires for like 45 minutes. Everybody was enthralled in the conversation. Maybe somebody that was working on that swerve match. was like, oh, you know what? Andrew loves vampires. Maybe we could do this. Maybe Hangman will become a vampire. I'm into it. Continental Classic, Blue League, Andrade, El Idolo. Three points, defeating Daniel Garcia. Daniel Garcia is like fifth loss in a row or fourth loss in a row. Maybe they're breaking him down to build him. Okay, if that's what you're doing, cool. Andrade looked good. I want to see him do more, too. So uh, he has three points. Spot, there was a spot in the back after with um, CJ and uh, Miro. Miro, yeah. Or CJ, yeah, CJ begged him not to uh, attack Andrade. So, so that's the we'll match see how that we're that's, getting to, yeah. yeah. So we got the Kingdom, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett with Roderick Strong, Strong defeating Iron Savages, Braun Boulder. Uh, Bra Bronson and Boulder, I'm sorry. Bear Bronson, nice Long Island boy. I've called one of his matches before. <laughs> Bron uh, Bear, Bron Bear Bronson, no, he's not a bear anymore. He's just Bronson and Boulder uh, with Jack Jameson. All right, <laughs> whatever. It was a match. House of Black so defeated big Chris. Yeah, go ahead. So I was gonna say, I'm sorry. The big part here was the interaction backstage with uh, Samoa Joe. So yeah. Roger Strong has now said he's been proxy. He's uh, he's uh, man, or Samoa Joe's best friend. And now the now the line is Samoa Joe. <laughs> oh, he just screams the so, Samoa now. Yeah, and then just says Joe quietly, and that's the whole thing. So yeah. this Jimmy people, I don't know what to think about this. I know you've said something you don't like it, but I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. This it appeals to some people. That's cool. It just doesn't do it for me. It's a two-hour show. I don't have to love everything, <laughs> you know. Yep. I guess <laughs> as long as the good is better than the bad for me, I'm fine. Uh, House of Black defeated Chris Daniels and Matt Seidel. This set up a confrontation with FTR, where they tried to get them to join the House of Black, but it was a setup. All right, this is cool. 
All right? I want to see yes. this match. Uh, I want to see Malachi in more singles. I want to see him have a nice singles run, have him challenge for the title, chase the title. I would... Uh, years ago, when when they started this, I and mean, when Malachi went there, I'm like, oh, he's a guy that they got they could put that title on. There is oh, such absolutely. upside with him. Buddy Matthews, another guy that could come out of that shell. I want to see more from both of them. I think an FTR looks feud like is a nice match. A, looks like they're going to end up the tag champs at some point. I, I hope mean, so. They're, they're great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got a timeless Tony Storm moment backstage with Renee Paquette. She was upset her title ceremony. <laughs> From last week was interrupted by Sky Blue. She challenged her for the title next week. I love you want to know who my source is? People are like, who's your source at WBD? It's Jack Warner. The same one that's talking to Tony Storm, okay? Jack Warner same calls one she's me. Going to, he's like, listen, she's going kid, to uh, parties. This, she's going this to wrestling old stuff. parties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's I go to her old timey parties constantly. Rock Hudson's there. You know, it's a it's a it's a it's a great time. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I love the Tony Storm thing. I, I, I would like her to wrestle like Tony Storm a little bit more, but I get it. I get what they're trying. They, they're experimenting. Let them do this. CJ, like you said, uh, and Miro had a conversation backstage. She begged Miro not to attack her clients. We got uh, Vikingo and Kip Sabian. I thought this match was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Kip did a great interview with my good friend Joel Pearl and Jeremy over at Fightful <laughs> the other day. On in the weeds, so I'm gonna give them a little plug there. Uh, I thought this was great. It was a good show for Kip. It got him to do something. I like Vikingo, and the main event: Brian Danielson defeated Eddie Kingston in a unbelievable match. Loved it, top to bottom. Danielson looked like a million bucks uh, with one eye. Danielson three points. Eddie zero. This is continuing the story of Eddie maybe being in a little over his head with this putting up two of his titles then making so this a, awesome. a triple crown. Oh. I thought Eddie was fantastic too. I thought Danielson oh. looked great. Uh, I want them to be healthy. I want them to continue uh, doing what they're I thought they were doing. going to a draw. I thought they were going to make this a draw. But they I ended thought so like too. Minutes. Yeah. I thought so too. I thought too. that's the line they were doing. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool. I, I very much like this main event. It's a great main event. I recommend you check it out. When we come back, we're going to go over a couple more things and wrap it up here. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show. Next week on Collision, Kenny Omega, Ethan Page. Ethan's looking great, by the way. He is jacked to the gills. AEW Continental Classic Blue League. Brian Danielson, Andrade. Is this? This is on Collision. Yes, on Collision. Brian Danielson and Andrade. You also have Eddie Kingston and Claudio. This is all on collision, these three matches. That's a big collision. So far, the standings. Moxley with six points in the Gold League. Swerve with six points in the Gold League. Jay White, three points. Roosh, three points. Jay Lethal, none. And Mark Briscoe, none. Blue League, Brody King, six points. Only one with six points. Danielson, three. Andrade, three. Claudio, three. Eddie, zero. And Garcia, zero. Listen, this is cool. I'm into this. I like everybody in this league. Uh, and, and you know what's funny? When, when Jay Lethal is, you know, the lowest card guy in the league, that's a good league. I, I want to see all these guys do something cool. There's going to be some unique opportunities to do some cool matches, and I'm glad that they're going to take it here with this. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, anything else I need to touch on? Um, no? I Okay, no. forget it. I'm not going to ask you again. <laughs> I thought maybe I missed something. Ah, oh, yes, I did miss something. Here it is. Uh, they announced that, that Revolution will be taking place at the Greensboro Coliseum on March 3rd. Sting's final Sting's match. Sting's last match. This, yep. this was announced with flair. Uh, okay, this also set up uh, more flair coming a lot of people are upset a lot of people are happy like what you like don't like what you like and we are out of here we'll see y'all next time on wrestling observer live take care